We can't talk about a nonprofit's pain points without talking about funding, right? All of these things I give you to demonstrate impact and to create your strategy and to make your programs and to be impactful, none of it really matters if you don't have the money to fund it, right? And so many nonprofits have funding at the top of their pain points list of their struggles. So I don't want to neglect it. I've given you guys a lot of templates and a lot of resources for you to get grants and get corporate sponsorships, but I don't want to neglect your community, your donors, your funders that you might have right there, especially if you're a local nonprofit. So today I want to talk about developing a fundraising committee. And if you're like, Rebecca, this sounds like a whole bunch of work and I already have a board that I can barely manage and here's yet another group of people that I need to manage or maybe you've tried this before and it just didn't work and nobody helped and nobody fundraised and it always felt like it was just more work for you. I get it. I get it because I have managed boards and I have managed councils negatively. Like I've done it poorly as a leader and I wanted to pull my hair out and it was just easier for me to do everything myself. But here's the deal. You are not going to be able to do all your fundraising. You need those people. And if you do it right, if you develop it right and you have good leadership in this committee, then it can take a whole bunch off your plate and bring you a whole lot of revenue. It can work well, and then not only do you get people giving money from your community, but you get people bought into your mission. More people are talking about you. More people are spreading the good word and more people are coming to your mission, meaning more dollars come to your mission. So I'm going to make this simple for you. And if you follow these steps, you can get a fundraising committee that is effective and fired up. They're little ambassadors for your cause. So let's talk about it. Welcome to episode 49 of the For Purpose Live Show, where I help you get clear, get focused, and be impactful simply by stepping into the calling that you have been given without taking on that common narrative that nonprofits have got to struggle. That's right, together we can get you in your sweet spot using all your strengths and your talents that you have been given to serve this world and build a movement for your cause simply by living for purpose, on purpose. I'm Rebecca Britt, your host, and today we are talking about developing a fundraising committee. Now, a couple weeks ago, I gave you guys a free template for a one funding one pager. So basically a one pager that you can write up for any of your funding opportunities. And we're going to talk about using that today to recruit people into your fundraising committee. So you can go grab that. That is at forpurposelive.com slash page, forpurposelive.com slash page. And that is a completely editable template that you can start plugging your ideas or your fundable opportunities into so that the people that sit on your fundraising committee know what they are trying to get funding for, okay? So you're going to need to equip these people and this is one way you can do it. So go grab that editable template. It's a Google Doc, easy peasy, and start building those out today. So first let's talk about why. Why do you need a committee? Okay, well, there is a whole bunch of people out there and we don't know all of those people until we start talking to our network, right? So we get a network together and that network can talk to their friends and that network can talk to their friends. And if we do this right, we can gain a movement for our cause. But really the only way you can do that is if you get some core people that are super fired up. And these are gonna be people at different levels. So there's, yes, there's people that might do direct service. Um, they might come volunteer and actually give volunteer hours. Those are great people. There might be people at your board that are serving your mission and offering governance and guidance to your nonprofit. But there's a whole pool of people that want to be involved in philanthropic efforts, but they may not be ideal to serve an hour a week or actually at your facility. And they may not want to serve as a board of directors, but they might be perfect people like they're socialites or they have a network within your community and you need to get them involved in some way. And people like to contribute. People like to feel helpful. So, if you give them an opportunity where they can contribute to your funding opportunities, they can give you feedback, they can uh, offer advice, not necessarily funding, but they can offer advice, they can talk about your cause. If you give them an opportunity that works for them, then they are much more likely to perform, okay? So you need a committee because 
there's all these local dollars, right? And if you have a local nonprofit, now if you have a national nonprofit, you can do this as well. You obviously have a community, a member group of people that are affected by this issue that you're trying to solve. But if you're in a local community, you have to have a presence, okay? You have to have a presence that goes beyond your volunteers and goes beyond your board of directors. You need to have an opportunity for everybody in the community to buy in. Every single person in the community should be able to buy into your mission. And one way people can do that is by giving money. It's easy to give money. It makes people feel good, but they need to hear about the opportunity. And usually they need to hear about the opportunity from somebody that they know. This is like peer to peer fundraising, okay? And so you can build that network with a committee and you need people out there like it can't be on you. Okay, you don't know these people. You don't have these relationships. So you need Fred with all of his people. You need Mary with all of her her people. You need people that can cast the net wider, okay? And putting fundraising completely on your board of directors, it just, it's not fair. They are there to serve a very specific role. Hopefully they all have job descriptions and they're all doing their job well. But board members often get burned out because they're doing, they are giving a lot of their time and a lot of their energy to do their specific role. And then they get chastised or they can feel this pressure of like, you're supposed to be giving money or you're supposed to be getting dollars or why aren't you doing more? And they can feel like, listen, I'm giving a lot here, okay? So, and a lot of people don't like fundraising, okay? So don't put all that pressure on them. Have a separate fundraising committee. Now, you are going to want one of your board meetings or board members to lead this committee. So elect somebody, whether it's your treasurer or whether it's just another board member that's just going to lead the fundraising committee that's fine, but you're gonna want one of your board members to be leading this committee. That way it takes it off of you um, and it equips a board member with a job that they should report on every board meeting, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go through how to develop this fundraising committee, all the things that you should do. And as I go through it, you might go, geez, Rebecca, I don't even have that for my board. I don't even have that for my volunteers or my staff. Fine. If you don't, do it. Do it for your board of directors where it makes sense. Make sure that your board of directors is solid and that you're offering all these things I'm going to say to use to develop a fundraising committee. If you don't have them for your board, make them for your board first. Have your board help you develop them so that they are bought in to the foundational documents and how we're going to govern this new committee, right? This doesn't all need to fall on you. Send them this YouTube and tell them, I wanna do this for us. What do you think? Okay, all right, so the first thing you're gonna do when you're starting to think about developing a fundraising committee is, and even if you only have a board of three and you just feel like, oh, a larger organization really should have a fundraising committee, we're too small, start now. What's the worst that will happen? You'll get two or three people on your fundraising committee and they'll bring in a small amount of dollars and you'll learn something They'll tell you what works, what didn't, why they felt bought in, why they didn't feel bought in, where the pitfalls were with your fundraising committee, why they weren't getting, whatever it was. Start now. If you have a very small board, start in this direction, okay, so that you can learn. So that in three years, you're not starting your first one with a few people, but in three years, you've learned your, from your mistakes and you've created a good network of people, okay? This is a practice. Start now. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get clear and get focused. You need foundational documents. You don't just go start asking people, do you wanna be on a fundraising committee? I don't know. Sounds like I'm gonna have to write a bunch of checks and I don't know what your cause is or I don't know what we're fundraising for, okay? So the first thing is you wanna open a Google Doc, like I always say, (laughs) write out the purpose. What's the purpose of this fundraising committee? Is it a main capital campaign? Are they trying to get operation expenses? Are they just funding anything that's on your to be funded list? What is the overall purpose of the committee? Anybody that's joining something needs to understand the purpose of the group. This will help when the group goes off on a tangent and wants to fund something silly that one person wants and their heart would love this little program and can't we develop it and we're gonna go fund it. Let's go back to our purpose. The purpose of this fundraising committee is to make sure that we have operational expenses or whatever it is. But you can go back to your purpose, 
so that people understand while they're on this committee, this is what we're doing. If they want to do something extra, they may be able to do that in a different capacity. Okay. So the purpose, why are, why is everybody here? Okay. People are going to need to know why they're here. And you know what? Ask that question. Ask your board, ask your staff, ask your volunteers, ask several times a year. Hey guys, why are we here? And check and make sure that everybody is kind of on the same page about why we're here. Because I'll tell you, when I deal with culture issues, staff, volunteers, board members that are confused or are not uh, being productive, many of them are not quite sure why they're there or what they're supposed to be doing, okay? That's why this part is so important. So, why are you there? Then start brainstorming who are you looking for? Like, what is the criteria for entry? What, who, who would be ideal to sit on this thing? Are we just gonna ask anyone? Are we gonna ask people that have great communication skills? Are we gonna ask people that have a lot of money? Are we gonna ask people that have a lot of friends? Um, are we gonna ask people that we know are very well known? Are we gonna ask people that have time? Because some of these people that we go after that are like, they have a lot of friends and they have a lot of money, guess what, they have zero time. So maybe you want somebody that doesn't have that much money but has a lot of time and is dedicated and has a lot of friends, knows a lot of people, okay? So really just think about what's your criteria for inclusion and then you can brainstorm actually who those people, put some names to those people, okay? What are their qualifications? You wanna think about what duties will they perform, right? So, okay, we know Sandy would be great. We're gonna reach out to her and ask her, what are you telling Sandy she's gonna do? What does it look like to sit on this committee? Is it once a week meetings? Is it once a month meetings? Is it um, hosting events? Is it simply having conversations with your donors? Is it writing thank you letters? Is it whatever? planning events. So you have to really think about what is this fundraising committee gonna do? It's easy to say like, okay, we're here to fund operations. How are they gonna do that? What are their specific duties? Maybe somebody on it is gonna plan events. Maybe somebody else is gonna do donor cultivation. Maybe somebody else is going to um, brainstorm new ideas. Like maybe there's different roles just like your board of directors has, but you've gotta get that clear what do you want it to look like? Who should focus on what? Is the whole committee coming together to do the same thing? Are there different roles for t different people? Think about that, write that all out. What's the time commitment? One way fundraising committees work really well is if you have them all come together, them all initially invite their friends and family, their networks to an awareness event, just say, hey, I'm starting to serve um, or volunteer for this nonprofit. I would really love for you guys to hear more about them. They serve this specific population. They're doing really good work. There's an awareness event that's coming up. I would love to have you guys come and just learn more about it. It would be a great thing for the families to do um, or just so that we can see if we're aligned with, you know, where our hearts are at. And then you have all of your different fundraising committee members bring their friends to an awareness event. And that's where they just learn about your cause. You don't ask them about any money. You tell them, you know, there's a fundraising committee if you're trying to invite new people, but you just tell them about your cause and you say, hey, can you just spread the good word? We need volunteers, we need mentors, you know, we need fundraisers, but mainly we just need people to know about our cause and go out into the community and just talk about it, okay? And that's the awareness event. And then later on, when your fundraising committee plans a fundraising event, we recontact those people and we say, now we're having this big fundraising event. Can you invite all your friends um, and network to come? And they are much more apt to send out those invitations than if they hadn't come to an awareness event, maybe where you provided them lunch and you told them and they were able to see the heart of your mission. They were able to come to your property, maybe see it going on. An awareness event and then leading up to the fundraising event. I think that's a really good way to spider out that network okay so that's one thing that you could list as like what the fundraising committee is going to do they may do a whole bunch of other things just make sure you write it out in the expectation you write their length of term how long are you expecting them to stay on this committee is it a one-year commitment is it a two-year commitment do you ask them to replace their seat when they leave um so all of those expectations and so when you are inviting them they're going to commit to these expectations and then when they all show up to do their first meeting, you or the board member leading it isn't like, thanks for coming. No, you're like, 
Great, we all know exactly what we're going to do. Let's get started. People want to be on a team where somebody is leading it, where things are clear, where they're focused, where they know exactly what's expected of them and they know when they've done a good job, okay? So then we're gonna move into recruiting people. So how do you recruit people? Now you have a list of people that would be good and you think you know who you want to invite. So now have every one of your board members commit to inviting five people, okay? And you commit to inviting five people. So we're going to hopefully get one per each one of those five. And how you're going to do that is you're going to develop, or hopefully you already have, your one pager. So you may have several different funding opportunities that you need, okay? So maybe you wanna launch a new program, maybe you wanna get a new building. There might be a whole bunch of things that you're trying to do. For each one of these fundable opportunities, you need to have a funding one pager. And that you can get for purposelive.com slash page. Um, and you can create, you know, what's the problem? What's the solution? Why are you the best ones to do it? What's the budget? Just a real quick snapshot of why you need this funding, why it's critical. Okay, so then you're going to send that one pager to the five people you committed to and each one of your board members is gonna send this one pager to the five people that they committed to. Say, hey, I serve on the board of this organization or hey, you know that this organization is near to me or dear to my heart because I founded it. This is something that we're looking for funding on and I just wanted to see if this one pager made sense to you. It's really critical that we get funding for this but before I launch a fundraising campaign, I just wanted to get your feedback on it. Is there any way that we could schedule some time to discuss this one pager or this opportunity so that you can help me understand how to pitch it better. Then they say, sure, here's some feedback. You get on the phone with them. You talk about your mission. You talk about why it's important. Maybe you talk about other fundable opportunities if this one didn't strike strike it with them. Then say, listen, you know, say right up front, I am not looking for your money. I really just want your feedback so that I can be as effective in po as possible when I am asking for money. Um, or I just want suggestions of who you think this might be uh, aligned with. You get on the phone with them and then the ask is, do you think after you go through feedback and you say like, all right, how do you think we could get this funding and who do you think this could be aligned with and they give you great ideas, say to them, oh my gosh, this feedback has been so very helpful. You are amazing at this. I think you have such great ideas. I would love to invite you to be on our fundraising committee. Don't worry, you don't need to give any money of yourself, but we're trying to build a group of people that can get fired up about this cause and about this population and you know, throw in something juicy like foster kids deserve to have a community working for them. Children that are unwanted deserve to have their community behind them. So if you could just come to the table with us and help us figure out how we can build awareness events and fundraising events and how we can spread our network, is that something you'd be interested in? I can tell you about the commitment and, and what we expect, but I would love to invite you to that. You know, invite them and their spouse if you want. Okay, so, that's how you recruit. And then you can get some commitments. You want to make sure that they understand what's expected of them. So you're gonna send them the document that you created that says the purpose and the time commitment and what they're doing and the duties and all of that. You're gonna send that over. And once these people agree to be on a fundraising committee and keep following up, right? They might say, I might need to think about it. I'll look over some stuff, whatever. But keep following up until you get the commitment, okay? And then once you have your people that have opted in, you need to onboard them. So do not just say to them, okay, great, the first meeting is Tuesday at this date, and then go to the meeting, okay? Make them believe that you have had a system and process for onboarding people for a long time, like be buttoned up. And so when they say like, sure, I can commit to that, be like, great. Stacy is the head of our, uh, she is chairing this committee. She will be in touch with you to onboard you onto the, the fundraising committee. She's going to be ecstatic. I'll connect you to, connect you to, hand it off to the board chair that is, or the board person that's chairing this committee, and then they will onboard this person, okay? And they are going to onboard this person first and foremost through training about your organization. 
Now, you can do this the old, boring, time-consuming way, which is like Stacy and this person gets on a call together and she goes through a PowerPoint slide of like, this is our organization and these are the great things we do and da 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 Or you can make a really easy, quick video of, of that presentation. There's zero reason why you do not have an About Us video at this point in this day and age. Like I am literally on my computer and if I wanted to share slides with you right now, I could. You just hit record. I use Loom, okay, and you can record a slide deck. And what I like about this is if you have the executive director do it or the founder do it, they can give their fire, okay? Stacy might be like, yeah, and there's a lot of programs that they're doing and I know that we like to do this, okay. But if they listen to a video from the founder, I would hope that the founder can really talk about the problem that's in the society, the solution, why you're positioned for it, why we need you. It can start with like, thank you so much for agreeing to be on our fundraising committee. We know that this is not a small task, but we need you and you are giving back to your community. Okay. So you get to make it however you want and then everybody gets the same training. Yes, there are platforms that you can do to make sure that everybody actually followed the video. You could give them a little quiz, like hopefully you don't need to hold people accountable too much, or maybe you hold an onboarding meeting where you all just watch the video, okay? Then you should do question and answers. Do you guys have questions? Like, do you have questions about our model, about our programs, about how we get our funding, about anything? Anything that they need to know, want to know, you need to give them okay because they need to get fired up you may also want to identify things that they're really interested in so let's say one person really really wants to lead a adoptive parent support group and they want to find funding for that Uh, and another person is way more fired up about just getting the operational expenses covered or whatever or getting a building or whatever it is that's fine If they are fired up about that and they can feel passionate when they're pitching and they're out there and they're talking to the community, listen, when we go to this facility, the kids don't even have a place to stand in when it rains. We have got to do better. If they would pitch that way better than adoptive parents need a support group, then let them pitch that. Let them go where their heart flows, okay? Um, So tell them that that's okay, as long as they're all fundable opportunities that you guys are looking for funding for anyway, okay? So with the training, you want to have some videos. If your board of directors doesn't have videos to watch, if your staff, if your volunteers, if you don't have something to say, welcome, here are some onboarding videos. Here's what we do here. Here's why it's important. Here's our very specific model. Here's why we are set apart from other people. You've got to give people the backpack to go out and into the community and talk about all the amazing things. They're not just kind of some place that does something nice for kind of a population, maybe. No, this is exactly who we are. This is exactly how we pitch it. This is why we're different. This is why we're unique. And this is why we need to be funded. Okay? People need to get that. And you, it's your responsibility to give them all the ammo they need. If one person is like, still don't really quite get what we do or still don't really quite know why, what's important, my program that I started Stable Moments is a great example of this because it uses horses and it uses um, mentorship program and color coding and individualized plans of care. There's so many little pieces to the program. And I had to figure out ways for people to understand. And people go, oh yeah, animal therapy, I get that. My dog really helped me through. And horses are different. Horses are different because they're prey animals and they're just like kids with trauma. They're hyper vigilant and they have to sense threats in their surroundings, okay? Yeah, dogs are great, but dogs are predators. We don't use them for this therapy specifically because horses are so much more like kids who have endured trauma. Okay, so telling people the differences, why, how we would respond and what makes you unique is just really, really helpful, okay? And have this be ongoing, like, yes. I mean, I probably wouldn't talk about the nuances of horse psychology in this initial training, but I could give them weekly, monthly trainings just about our model and guess what? This monthly thing about your model, this little video can go out on your YouTube, it can go out on your social, and then you can make sure that your board's watching it, your fundraising committee's watching it. Everybody needs to catch fire, right? So think about these trainings 
And it literally can be hopping on your computer and recording yourself, getting fired up and letting them know your good message. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, folks, get comfortable. Okay, if you care about your population, you need to be able to deliver it. You have to be able to get other people to care. Okay, so get used to it. And that just might be practicing a whole lot. Watching yourself and hearing yourself and going, ooh, and then continuing to do it. Okay, okay, so onboarding happens, training happens. So you need to tell them what are they expected to do? What I love the most is to give people templates. Do you know that about me? I just give people the stuff. So I say, here's an email you could send. Write it for them. Copy and paste this email to the five people. Send this video to the five people. Ask for a commitment. This is what reach out looks like. Step one, step two, step three, step four, okay? Hand them all the resources and all the tools that they would ever need. That way the message is never getting mumbled. And they're like, sure, if you write me an email, I can send it to a whole bunch of people, okay? So give them some training. If the first thing you're going to do is ask them to invite people they know to an awareness event, write the invitation. Tell them to please personalize it, make it sound like them, but they can copy and paste. Have them make a list, maybe the first thing that they're gonna do is make a list of the people they're gonna send it to and why. So that you know that you're not saying, hey, here's a copy and paste email, send it to your friends, and they send it to two people and they're like, I did it. No, I'd like to know who you're sending it to and why. Can I know more about these people on your list? Can I know more about your network? Great, we've got a list of 35 people you're gonna send it to, and all together we've got a list of 500 people that we're gonna send this out to. Or maybe if we're just sending them a one pager, because guess what? You know what's so cool? The same way that you recruited the person to sit on the finance committee is the same way you're going to recruit people to come to your awareness event. You can say, here's a one pager about this thing. We were wondering if you had feedback. We'd love you to come to an awareness event. Don't worry, we're not asking for any money. We're actually just asking for you to engage in conversation about how we can get the community more involved. Would you be willing to come to this one hour luncheon where we're going to talk? about this issue and you can actually see the program and how it runs and all that, whatever. So you can use the same thing. Again, leverage and maximize all of your steps. If you are constantly talking about your mission and the kids you serve and what you're trying to find, everything should remain the same. It's all the same thing. It's all the same good work, okay? Just tweak it for different audiences. Okay, and then finally, once you've onboarded them, they know all about your cause, what you're trying to fund, what they're trying to do. They understand the commitment. You've trained them. They know how to do what you are expecting them to do. Make sure that everyone gets a role, everyone commits, and everyone reports. So maybe the first one, first meeting you're saying, okay, I want you guys to think about who you would invite to an awareness event, and I want you to bring the lists to the next meeting and then have that board member that's leading it, make sure they remind people about the next meeting, make sure they remind people about the list, tell them what format you want the list in, give them a Google sheet and say drop, there's a tab at the bottom of the sheet for each one of you, I want you to drop your lists in. So this creates uh, group accountability because if I see my name at the bottom of a sheet and I see Fred's name and I see Bill's name and I see Kathy's name and I see Rebecca, I'm gonna fill mine out because I don't wanna get to the meeting and have my tab be the only one that's empty. And if you get to the meeting and somebody has an empty tab and they didn't do it, be like, okay, when are you gonna get this? It only takes people a couple of times of getting called out publicly before they either decide to not engage anymore because this was more of a commitment than they expected or for them to get on with it, okay? So always give them something to do and always give them a time to report it back. So then you come to the first meeting and everybody's added their list of people to this spreadsheet. Okay, then the next meeting, they're actually going to commit to calling or emailing each one of these people. And you can say in the spreadsheet, make sure you do a drop down that they've been emailed or highlight their name in a color if they've been emailed. Give them the system and the process to use so that they know how to do it easily. They're going to copy and paste an email. They're going to change the person's name in the spreadsheet to a different color once they've reached out to them. Then you and the rest of the group members get to see the progress people are making, okay? 
And then every single meeting, the agenda should have everybody reporting something. So even if it's just, we want to hear the feedback you're getting from the community, we want to hear what this process is, be, is like for you. If everybody has a, a, a spot on the agenda where they need to report something, they are much more likely to show up and not just be like on their phones or it's another thing that they're volunteering at or whatever. If they have to report something, if they have to present something, if they have to add input, they will be much more bought in. And this will be a much more rewarding process for them, okay? So again, if you can apply this to your board, apply it to your board if it's helpful. Okay, and then on each agenda, I want you to also be thinking about evaluation. How are we evaluating whether or not this committee is doing well? What are our KPIs? And the KPIs could be, you know, attendees, number of attendees at the awareness event, percent of attendees from the awareness event that showed up to a fundraising event. It could be dollar amount that the uh, committee has brought in, although that may be difficult to, you know, decipher out from the rest of the money that has come in. But either way, how are we saying that this is being successful? This might just be if you don't have KPIs that you're tracking and you don't want to get that technical, you could just ask, guys, at the bottom of every meeting, we're going to talk a little bit about how this is going. Are we hitting our objectives? Do we feel like we're doing good? Do we feel like there's anywhere we're missing? Do we feel like there's anything we're adding? Are there any resources that would be really helpful? Are there things that the organization isn't giving you as a committee to make this helpful? And if you're ever sitting there as the leader of this committee, trust me, I've been there a million times where you're like, I don't know how to help you guys because you're not helping me. That's what I say. Guys, I don't feel like, I feel like there's a disconnect. I feel like we leave one meeting and we say we're gonna do something and people come back and, and I'm not into wasting time and I know that you guys don't wanna waste your time. So I'm wondering, is there something that I haven't given you some clarity, some direction, some resource or do we need to change up how we run or who we run with? People like honest conversation, okay? Okay, so then that is just evaluating how it's going, but you wanna make sure that you have evaluative measures in place and you have these real conversations in place because what could happen is you just keep going on and on and on and we have this fundraising committee. It ends up being a check in the box because you don't really know how you're doing. You don't have time for open conversation. You don't really know if you're fundraising more because of it. And it's just something you do because somebody said you should have a fundraising committee, okay? So always evaluating, is this wor working? Is this helpful? Do we need to change things up? Is the fundraising committee working for us? Is this working for us, okay? And then you want to celebrate. Anytime you have a win, if you show up to that first meeting or that second meeting and everybody has filled out their tabs with people that they know, you better celebrate. You better be like, look at this list, you guys. We're doing it. We are building a fire amongst our community and it's because of you. Figure it out. Send them something to their house when they've done something really well. Hey, I've noticed that we uh, month over month, you continue to just really put in the effort. Send them a little something, whatever, from the nonprofit, from you personally. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate have a separate celebration just for the fundraising committee so that they can see all of they've done. Guys, without you, we would not have this network. We wouldn't have the connections with the Rotary Club and the school board and da da da. And we wouldn't have this $75,000 that we brought in this year. Like you guys did this. You guys are making real change, okay? So just make sure that if you're celebrating because people are gonna get fired up. The most disengaged people are the ones don't know what they're doing, don't know why they're there, they never have evaluation conversations, and they don't even know if they're making an impact. Real, you can get people to not want to be part of your cause real quick. And the real detriment to that is people leave and they don't just not talk about you because you were supposed to be creating ambassadors, right? But now you've created somebody that like might talk poorly about you might be like yeah i was on their fundraising committee they're really disorganized i i don't know i don't really know what they do i don't really know what they do with the money i don't really know what they do with their time okay don't let anybody say that about you so we've talked about why you need a committee 
You've got to get clear and get focused. Make sure that you have all these documents. What's the purpose? What's the time commitment? What do meetings look like? What do you want them to do? What are their objectives? What are their duties? Who would be good? What's criteria for inclusion? You've got to get all of that down and do that with your board of directors, okay? Get a Google Doc going with everybody and make sure that you flesh this out so that when you are inviting somebody, you can say this is exactly what the fundraising committee is, okay? Then you're going to recruit people by sending them a uh, one pager and saying, hey, can you give me feedback? Oh my gosh, your feedback was so good. And you, I know this is so aligned with your heart. Would you mind coming on and being part of our fundraising committee? We could really use minds like yours on how to get the community more involved in our cause, okay? Then once they say yes, you've got to onboard them, okay? You have got to make sure that you are giving them training on how they do what they do, who you are as an organization, and then you need to give them a specific role. Make sure that you're telling them exactly what they should do, what they should bring to each meeting, what they're reporting on. Give them a spot specifically right in the agenda so they know, okay, that's when I'm gonna be reporting. You wanna evaluate it. Make sure that you're asking, is this working? Don't just do a fundraising committee to do a fundraising committee. Continue to get their feedback and to continue to assess the efficacy of your fundraising committee, okay? And then celebrate. Celebrate, make sure to pause and tell people how amazing they are because you could not do this alone. You couldn't do this without them, okay? All right, make sure to get that one pager editable template at forpurposelive.com slash page and drop in the comments uh, something that you struggle with when you are bringing a board together or something that has really been a pain point for you when, you keep, when you're trying to keep engagement of these groups. I will always try to help in the comments. Please like, subscribe, send this channel to anybody that you think it would be helpful for because I know that we need grassroots nonprofits like yours to solve a lot of these issues we have, okay? Thank you so much for your service to this world. Until next time.